Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible study as we continually rightly divide the word of Yahweh as a workman. Now in the last uh, Bible study that I uploaded to uh, social media or YouTube, it was on redeeming the time there in Ephesians 5.16 of a hidden truth revealed people about the word not only redeem, but redeeming the time. The word time there, karos in the Greek, is the same uh, Greek word used in Genesis 1.14 by the Septuagint. So this has to do with God's divine fixed appointed times. Now, some of you that don't understand or haven't studied God's divine appointments or Leviticus 23 you might ask well what is cross time what's so important about that well that's God's uh, seven holy days or seven feast and his weekly Sabbath well in in that understanding uh, you might ask well what's that got to do with me a Christian uh, under or uh, that joined the New Testament church and we're saved by grace through faith. And so we're not under the Torah. And so we don't have anything to do with the feast of the Lord. Or we don't have anything to do with the Sabbath that I worship on Sunday. Okay, so we have talked about those arguments before. But in case there's some of you, which it would be most of you out there in social media. Or YouTube that listens to this video because... There's about 2 billion so-called Christians or denominations or Protestants that belong to these denominational, non-denominational, orthodox uh, assemblies that you all worship on Sunday. Well, the reason for this Bible study, people, what was Paul really saying? Now, I'm going to, I'm going to move to Colossians, the fourth chapter, because Paul also uses the same phrase of Greek words redeeming the time in Colossians the fourth chapter as he did in Ephesians 5.16. So it's very important that we understand what the word karos means because there again it means God's divine appointments. Now Paul is telling you to redeem some translations say uh, purchase or buy back. That's the meaning of the word redeem. It means to purchase, buy back something that's been lost. Now, according to what Paul's saying, what's been lost is the worshiping of the Sabbath and the holy days because he says redeem the time. The word time is karas, and that has to do with God's fixed divine appointments, people. So now hopefully that you'll understand uh, what's been hidden, this great truth that's been hidden, because out of all the sermons I've listened to on redeeming the time of whether it's Ephesians 5, 16, Colossians 4, 5, it's all about, it, it's, it had, they, none of them understand that that word T-I-M-E or season is translated from the Greek text garas to the English word time or season. None of them understand the depths of what that really means what that time actually means see so by not knowing what the divine appointments are then it's just like you're redeeming time as you were a sinner or off doing your thing and God saved you from alcohol or drinking or adultery or or gambling or whatever and now you spend your time going to church tithing worshiping God etc 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 but see that's not what the word means people the word means to buy back the days that you worship God on which are divine which he created Genesis 114 so there's a huge difference uh, so what he's saying if you're worshiping on Sunday go back to worshiping on Saturday. So what he's saying, uh, start rehearsing or celebrating or assembling with like-minded people that assemble on the Passover. 
on unleavened bread. Let's celebrate first fruits at the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of the dead saints, Matthew 27, 51, 52, what Paul explains to you in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 uh, through 23, that they are the first fruits. And John reveals in Revelation 14, they, redeem, they were redeemed from this earth uh, by Christ after his resurrection, and that is the 144,000. And then Paul also uh, is a witness in Acts, the 26th chapter, which I've got all of these uh, studies up on YouTube uh, when he was uh, given his confession before King Agrippa. And he told King Agrippa and all of those that was listening to his confession that the 12 tribes were in heaven uh, worshiping God night and day, and there's hope for them to come because they're the original owners of Abraham's land, which was uh, in covenant when God made a covenant with Abraham through Isaac and through Jacob. So at the appropriate season when Christ comes back to set up his kingdom, guess who's coming back with him? The saints. The holy saints are coming back, which is the 12 tribes, which is his bride. Now there again, all of this goes against the teaching out there in theology. I understand that. But once you come to understand what these verses mean and who is the witness behind these verses, then the Bible uh, verifies what I'm saying. So go test the scriptures. Uh, test what, the, go look at the scriptures. Don't, uh, don't come up with, uh, as I talked to one rabbi and never did get to meet with him, but just over the telephone in a very hurried conversation, and when I told him that the, uh, the 144,000 or the 12 tribes that Rachel, the children Rachel's weeping for, was the resurrected 12 tribes, uh, he immediately uh, shut me down and said, well, that sounds pretty good. You're using some scripture there. But brother, you got to understand that only southern Judah was back from captivity when Christ came. Well, this brother or this rabbi who's supposed to know the Old Testament didn't realize he needs to go look up in Nehemiah, Ezra, and First Chronicles, and it lists all of the sons of the different tribes that come back with Nehemiah and Ezra to build the temple uh, and the city. And the, and the Bible says that all the tribes were mixed in with Judah and Levi the Levites and uh, the Benjamites. So that's in the Old Testament also, but not many people want to talk about that. Now, what is correct, there were, uh, the, some of the historians say maybe 9 million, 10 northern tribes at that time, possibly 9 million of them were dispersed. So they never come back as a collective uh, 10 tribes, but there was the ten tribes with the southern kingdom represented in 586 when they come back from Babylon to build the temple in the city because it's in the scripture. You go read all the verses it gives the lineage. So there again, uh, when people want to come down, come out and instead of listening to the scripture and believing what the scripture is, uh, they want to shoot down uh, what the scripture is saying because, hey, only the Levites, the Benjamites, and maybe some of, uh, of uh, and Judah, and maybe some of Manasseh or something, were back in the land. No, the Old Testament says they were all represented uh, in the ones that's come back. So you take that, add 586 years to it when Christ came, and there was plenty of population of the 12 tribes in Judea, Bethlehem, and the coast thereof, the Bible says, which Herod sent out to kill uh, Rachel's children. So, but why would Paul make such a, a ridiculous statement if that's true in Acts, uh, in his confession, when he says the 12 tribes? Well, the 12 tribes were sealed in Revelation 7 by circumcision. See, also with the Father's name in their forehead, uh, of course, when they are ascended to heaven, uh, just like we are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, but we're not under the sealing of circumcision. But the 12 tribes were under 
uh, that sign of circumcision through Abraham, that was the sign given a covenant Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's how Herod knew people. Uh, his soldiers knew those two-year-old male and under Israelites. That was why God gave the sign to Abraham for righteousness. So Herod's soldiers knew all they had to do was check those little uh, male Israelite babies two years old and under because they, by covenant, they had to be circumcised. They would check if they were circumcised, then they were slaughtered. But there again, all things work after the counsel of God's own will. And at the resurrection of Christ, when he gave up the Ruach, God marked and broke open the graves of the first fruits, just like Matthew records. And three days later, according to Scripture, after Christ's resurrection, they come out of their graves. So this is all coming out, people. And all these people, sects that think they are the 144,000 or have anything to do with it, or the Jews that think that there's going to be a remnant of Jews, that, uh, 144,000 Jews, I'm sorry, but the, but the 144,000, the Rashid, first fruits, Rashid in Hebrew, first rank and order of the new creation has already been resurrected. Jacob has already been fully redeemed under the old covenant, Jeremiah 31.11. And then Jeremiah 31, 15, 16, 17 prophesies everything that I've just said. That Rachel was weeping for her children and Adonai tells Rachel in verse 16 to quit weeping that they will be rewarded. How will they be rewarded? As first fruits of Elohim the Lamb through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then the 17th verse says that they will come back again future at the end here, right where we're, it's about time for them now, and the last jubilee uh, to take back their ownership, and they will come back to their own border. If you go read, whoever's watching this, just go read Jeremiah 31, 11, then drop down to verse 15, 16, 17, and see if the God don't reveal to you just what I've told you. Now, uh, by me saying that, now I want to move back to Paul's teaching, and we're going to go to Colossians, uh, the fourth chapter. We're going to start in verse 1. Colossians, the fourth chapter, uh, verse 1. I'm going to click over. I might look at the polygot, which is the apostolic uh, translation of the Greek into English. Uh, but I will click on the King James here. Most people have a King James. But to prove something, I'll go to the polygot because the King James does have some things in error when it comes to the strong number of the Greek text. Now, let me, let me raise this up so you can see better here. Okay. Colossians 4.1. 4, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Talking about Yeshua. Continue in prayer and watch. Here's the command. And the same with uh, thanksgiving. Now remember, Christ told us to watch and pray at all times in Luke 21, 36. So this is, Paul's talking about the same thing here, people. Now, uh, Colossians 4, 3. <clears throat> with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance, that's actually logos, or uh, that means the, the word there, utterance or logos. This is not talking about speaking in tongues. This is the Greek word logos. Uh, reasoning, uh, open to a door of reasoning, understanding. To speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. See? Okay, now... Colossians 4.4 4, That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And then Colossians 4.5 Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Okay, people, here is this word, time. 
the word is kiras. It means a set occasion, proper time. It has to, it is synonymous with moed, moedim in the Hebrew. So this the the Old Testament and the New Testament lines up perfectly now because because we have a Greek word that is synonymous with the Hebrew word moed or in the plural moedim which means God's holy days or his divine appointments now <clears throat> what I want to talk let's talk here a minute now so what I want to talk to you about here before we go on is ask the question since you have learned an unbelievable hidden truth about this word time this is not any old time people now if you click on the internet on, on YouTube and go look at any preacher all kinds of preachers that preach Ephesians uh, 5.16's or Colossians uh, 4 or 5 about redeeming the times just go listen to a sermon and then you being corrected by the Holy Spirit you understand that what they are saying is incorrect people because why in the world uh, understanding what Karas means and what Paul is saying he's telling you to buy back the Sabbath can you believe that? He is telling us to purchase, buy back what has been lost. See? So, so what's been lost? Worshiping God and following God on the Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, and His holy days, people. Now, think about it. We've all been led to believe through traditional Christianity, no matter what assembly you belong to thousands of them out there but what do they all have in common people they all worship on Sunday they all say that that the holy days and the weekly Sabbath was done away with at the cross it's either a spiritual Sabbath or we worship on Sunday because of Acts 20 verse 7 which I've already talked to y'all about that's a mistranslation that's not the first day of the week that's day one of one of the Sabbaths between unleavened bread and Pentecost. There's seven Sabbaths. So in the context, that's why the scripture talks about in the verse before, in Acts 20, verse 6, it talks about the days of unleavened bread. So think about all the theology and all of this preaching for hundreds of years that people think that they can stand behind Acts 20, verse 7, and also several other verses which have been translated first day of the week which should have been translated uh, day of one of the Sabbaths. So Paul was not breaking bread on Sunday, people. It's proven in the Greek text. It's so simple, but when man takes off and runs with it and it's been passed down from generation to generation, look what we're in. And Satan is the one that brings uh, deception to the body of Christ because his main goal is keep the body divided and, uh, and then you will miss your inheritance, see. He will be worshipped through deception, which you don't know you're doing, and then you think you're worshipping God through Christ and then you come to find out it's all vanity that you've been actually, like we all have, we've been raised in this falsehood. Now, so think about it now. I mean, you can get upset and get mad because uh, your parents believe that or your grandparents believe that. Well, we're all in the same boat. You know, I was raised to worship on Sunday. All of my family was, uh, was raised to worship on Sunday, uh, whether they were Church of Christ, Baptists, or... Methodists or whatever denomination that they belong to. But what is Paul saying here, people? I'm giving you the definition and exactly what Paul is saying to a bunch of Gentile converts that had converted to the Messiah. And Paul is telling us to redeem the time 
which has to do with God's divine appointments. Now, that's, that's what he's telling us. So that don't sound like they're nailed to the cross when Paul's telling you. You see how we've been deceived? Now, let's continue here in verse uh, 4, 6. Okay. What does Paul say? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how we ought to answer every man. Right here, every man. And my state shall uh, Tychicus declare unto you who is beloved brother and a faithful minister and a follower in the Lord. Now, see, if he's a follower of the Lord, he's following the Sabbath and the Holy Day, see? Uh, so that's what Paul says. He's a faithful minister. Now, Paul says, whom I've sent unto you for the same purpose that he might know your estate, where you are, as far as estate means actually uh, with respect to a place or cause or time, subject or occasion. So uh, he wants to know uh, what you believe, your estate, and then to comfort your hearts, he says. See? Also, on uh, Cinemas, or, or Simeus is a faithful and beloved brother, see, who is one that, that shall make known unto you all which are done here. That's talking about praying and worshiping on these divine appointments. So, we see here, people, how very important this is, this word karash. Now, We've been studying and talking about this because this word is used 86 times in the New, 86 times in the New Testament. So it's, it would take a year or two years of going over all the scripture and how it's used. I'm just going over a couple here, Ephesians 5, 16, and now we're looking at Colossians uh, 4, uh, 5, about redeeming the time, see? Now... What I want to do now is we're going to move to Acts, the third chapter, and we're going to see what Peter was preaching in the early uh, uh, days of the uh, apostolic or the early days of Acts, right after Pentecost there, you know, he stood up to preach in Acts 2. So in Acts 3, uh, we're going to pick up uh, Acts 3 at about verse 12 and then when we get to Acts 3 19 we're going to see an unbelievable prophecy which also is in he uses the same word uh, the Greek word karos so we're, go so we're going to see how Peter uses the word karos Paul says redeem the time the karos times uh, the Sabbath and the Holy Day. So we're going to see if Peter is saying the same thing. So let's go to Acts. You got your Bibles? Let's go to Acts, the third chapter. Okay. Acts, the third chapter. And we're going to start in verse 12. Now this is about him healing this guy, this guy that couldn't walk. And of course the uh, progenitors of Judah are watching everything. Uh, this is several years after Christ and the first fruits uh, ascended. So uh, Peter's preaching in the name of Jesus and of course uh, the Sadducees and the high priest and all of them don't like that. They're very upset, so we'll see that in a few minutes, but this is about the healing here. So we're going to miss part of the healing, and we're going to go down to uh, verse 12. Okay, right here, Acts 3, 12. Now when, when Peter saw... 
And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel at this, or why look so earnestly on us as though by our own power, our dunamis power, or our holiness, we had made this man to walk? Verse 13, The God of Abraham, the God of, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our forefathers, or our fathers, has glorified his son uh, Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when, when he was determined to let him go. That Pilate would let Christ go, but they chose Barabbas. 3.14 But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer, Barabbas, to be granted unto you. And kill the prince of life, whom God has raised from the dead. Wherefore, we are all witnesses. We all seen him. Peter and John, the ones that were teaching here, they were witnesses of Christ's resurrection and also the resurrection of the dead. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. Three, Acts 3.16 In his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This man had got up and walked. They knew who this man was. And it was by this man believing in the name of Jesus. By his faith he got up and walked. And they all seen this. Now, now uh, Peter says, And now, brethren, I walk that through ignorance ye did it as did also your rulers. 318 But these things which God before had showed by his mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer he has so fulfilled. Now, very important people, Acts 319 What is Peter saying here? He's saying to the crowd Repent Repent means to turn again. So he's saying, repent and turn. Ye therefore and be converted. See, the word converted here is to come again, to turn about again. In other words, the covenant is going to be removed, renewed with the house of Israel and Judah through the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ according to Scripture. So this is why he said that Christ had raised him from the dead, and this is why he quoted everything that happened when Christ was sentenced to the cross. So now he's saying, repent, be converted, that your sins be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now this word from does, in the Greek is actually opposite. It means... It's a primary particle, but it but the alpo means away from something that is near. See, so 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 uh, in place, time, or relation. See, so away from the presence of the Lord. But the when this time of refreshing comes, uh, the presence of the Lord is near, but He's not here yet. Uh, okay, now. Let's talk about this Acts 3.19 a minute. Okay. Now what is Peter prophesying here to these Israelites and to all of the, the crowd that he has there that he's preaching to? Now you got to remember the Sadducees and the chief priests uh, and those still of the temple at this time, they're watching the apostles every move they make just like they watch Christ. So they're in this crowd, they're in this background, we'll see this come up here in just a few minutes. So they're in this background lurking, you see, to see what, they, what these apostles are preaching. And therefore, of course, Peter was preaching in the name of Yahshua, and by faith, this uh, crippled man, lame man, got up and walked. So these uh, progenitors of the temple did not like that. We'll see that here in just a few minutes. Now, but what is Peter prophesying here in verse 19, people? 
Now he's saying that when the times of refreshing, this is future prophecy, which is actually people that is going on right now because the Lord is soon to return. So in the context, let's read it here. Here is the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And notice what the next verse is. 320. And he shall send Yahshua the Messiah, which was before which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the Kronos times or the restoring restitution of all which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the age began. So look what Peter's saying, people. Now this is not hard to understand if you just read the scripture. But, but what is being revealed is Peter is using the same Greek word that Paul was telling the believers in Ephesus and the believers at Colossae that they needed to redeem the, the Moeds, the Sabbath and the Holy Days and start worshiping God and the Messiah on those appointed times, see. Peter is telling the same thing here, except Peter is given a future prophecy. Now you got to remember, Paul said the mystery of iniquity does already work before he was ever martyred. Christ said many false teachers will stand up and say many. Uh, he talked about the mystery of iniquity, Christ did in Matthew the 7th. Peter talked about all the heresies and the sects and the false teachers that would come in and deceive many. But see, this prophecy is that the, Peter's talking about the, the times of refreshing would come at the end. See, Peter was a, uh, a preacher to the circumcision people. See, Paul to the Gentiles. So, so he is talking to the circumcision, which follow the divine appointments and read on the Sabbath in the synagogue and also kept the feast. But he's talking of future prophecy that when these times of refreshing come in the presence of the Messiah, the heavens must contain the Messiah till these times come. But what is these times, people? See, that's the whole key. This has not been revealed out to Christendom yet. It's coming because God is refreshing these times right now because there's a huge movement in Messianic and Hebrew roots. There's a huge movement, people, for people to start asking questions and learning about the Sabbath and starting to obey the Sabbath and also His divine appointments. They meet with like-minded people. That's what's going on, uh, people. That's the this prophecy Peter's talked about is being fulfilled as we speak right now. Now, let's, let's look at the Greek word refreshing. Very important. Let's look at this Greek word refreshing. G403, it actually means a recovery of breath that is figuratively a revival. Okay, now, so... So this word of refreshing of the times of the divine appointments, it means it means a fresh breath that God is breathing into us, opening our eyes to open our minds to the scriptures, and to go back and learn the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms and to worship God and to follow Christ on these appointed times. That's the fresh breath, see. See, that's just like the renewed covenant. Oh no, Larry, that can't be true because my pastor said, we don't, we don't have anything to do with the holy days and we don't worship on the Sabbath because Christ uh, and uh, Paul and all of them met on the first day of the week and broke bread. Well, all I can tell you is, and I've already put that on YouTube, Go to Acts 27 and look at the Greek text 
And that word that's used there is not the first day of the week. It's called one day of the Sabbath, plural. Paul broke bread on one of the Sabbaths between unleavened bread and Pentecost. That's why they said these were the days of unleavened bread. How many Sabbaths is there when they count the omer from uh, unleavened bread or first fruits? They count seven Sabbaths and the 50th day is Pentecost. So that's why the scripture says that. But you're not taught that. You've been deceived, people. Peter, uh, all of the apostles, why in the world here would Peter even be talking about a prophecy of people worshiping on the Sabbath and on God's divine appointments because they were doing them. But he was saying, just like Paul, there's going to come a falling away. There has to be a falling away of false doctrine, people. And that's been going on for 1,900 years. But before the Messiah comes, he's going to open a remnant of people, a Gentile people, converted uh, to the one new man uh, that's been grafted into the house of Israel that's no longer a Gentile. Now we go uh, and we have, uh, under the new covenant, with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now Judah's eyes are still partial blindness. But that prophecy will not happen until after the tribulation of those days when they see the sign of the Son of Man, which is the miracle or the oath in the Hebrew or Simeon in the Greek, right over their heads and the Bible says they will mourn for the one that they pierced 2,000 years ago to fulfill Zechariah uh, 12.10 people. So, so this is very, very important that we understand what's being said here. See, I'm just showing you now, whether you believe what I'm uh, witnessing to you, uh, I have witnessed to you with all of these videos, and all you got to do is go do a little homework and a little studying and to see uh, I, there's no way that I can come out and make this up, people. This is not a new doctrine. This was prophesied uh, in Acts 3 that there would be a re spiritual revival. That's talking about figurative now. That's talking about a spiritual awakening of believers uh, to, to redeem the time that they have lost by meeting on the wrong days worshiping God thinking they were and redeem those times to come back to God's divine appointments. Unbelievable truth here, people. Now, th this is going to hit the mainstream media because the Bible says right here that these times of refreshing would come before the Messiah returned in his second advent. And that's what's going on as we speak. Now, let's continue here. We will continue... Uh, to see what's going on here, let's look at Acts 3.21. Who the heaven must receive Christ until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets uh, since the age began. Now we know that we're almost at the end of the 6,000 years and Christ will come back uh, and start the 7,000 year of the millennium reign. That's when he will take over and Satan will be removed from the prince of the power of the air of this world. All right, let's look at Acts 3.22. Now, right here, people, was prophesied by Moses in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. I believe it's verse 8. It's either 8 or 18 there. You can go back. Because this is uh, Peter's quoting that scripture from Deuteronomy. Now, Moses truly said that the fathers... Unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Now, this is what Moses said. Shall ye hear in all things whatsoever this prophet will say unto you. Okay. Now, who is this prophet? This prophet is Jesus. Okay, let's look at Acts 3.23. Now notice what the uh, 
Peter is preaching here. And it shall come to pass at the end here that every soul which will not hear that prophet, Jesus Christ, shall be destroyed from among the people. <clears throat> okay, people. May God give you ears to hear, eyes to see, whoever's listening to this video. Do you realize what Peter is prophesied here? Do you realize that Brother Paul was telling those that were coming in to his assemblies by faith in, uh, uh, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, were being grafted into the natural olive tree and was uh, worshiping, praying, praising God on the Sabbath and his holy days. That's why he said to buy them back, people. I'm just telling you what he said, but if you don't know what that word time means, and most people don't, they assumed uh, that that word time just means any day of the week. It just means any time. Get back and worship God. Any, but that's not the correct uh, meaning of the of that definition of karas. It means God's divine appointments, people. That's what it means. It's, that's, it's synonymous with Moed, the Hebrew. Now, if I was talking to uh, a he, uh, Hebrew roots people or people that were worshiping and keeping or celebrating the holy days, they would know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Moed or Moedim. Genesis 1.14, Leviticus 23. That's because they're, God has breathed on them and there, that time of refreshing has come. But see, the Greek word time is synonymous with moed. They don't know this Greek word. Now, when the Hebrew people understand that this, uh, the, the word karas here in the New Testament, and, what, and when Paul is telling you to redeem the time, he's telling you to redeem the moeds to a bunch of Gentiles who don't know nothing about the moeds. See? But they know that the, the, the Greek word karos, they, they're a bunch of Greeks and Gentiles, but then he opens, God opens our minds to the front of the book so you have a complete thread, see. This is unbelievable, people. Now, this is coming out. So, what you know, and I know a lot of people are sitting there and saying, I've been worshiping God for 50 years. I have some people in this small assembly that I have that have come into this assembly that's been in a denomination, people, for 50-something years. It's hard. But that's the power of God and for the Holy Spirit to guide you in all truths. You either by faith are going to believe what the Scriptures are being opened to you now, or you're going to bow your neck and be stiff-necked and ear and heart and always resist God's truth. See, it's not your fault that some preacher didn't tell you about this. It's not my fault because I was raised and a preacher never said nothing to me about the Sabbath or the holy days. Just accept Jesus and when you die or you get saved, when you die, you're going to heaven and the whole thing is about Christ coming here. So I've had to go back and relearn everything. But guess what? That's God's power and being guided by the Holy Spirit. All you got to do is repent and believe the gospel. And study your word and meet, meet the Lord when he tells you to meet him. There again, Luke 21, 36, Christ is telling you to pray at these times that Peter is talking about the refreshing and Paul is telling you to redeem them. Paul even tells you in Ephesians 6, 18, to, with all prayer and supplication, pray at these times that he's telling you to redeem all. Unbelievable prophecy, people. I just hope that whoever views this video, I know you've never heard this before. It's not out there. But why don't you go check the scripture? Where do you think I got, I got it from the scripture? But am I supposed to, 
understand this most unbelievable prophecy here and then if I'm a teacher of the gospel I'm going to bury this and become an evil servant or am I going to uh, give it out and then Christ gives the, uh, and the Father gives the increase all I can do is tell you what it's saying that's what a teacher is supposed to do now notice here what's going to happen well right here it shall come to pass every soul which will not hear the prophet Christ shall be destroyed from among the people okay I've got a little time I'm going to go real quick let me show you something here people now I have the Lord has done revealed this but now just keep in mind what Peter said that if you do not hear and obey Jesus Christ you will be destroyed from among the believers, the people there. Now, that's what Peter's talked about. Now, let's just, let me give you an example real quick that God has revealed to us. Uh, Luke 21, 36. Now, this is just one example. I've done talk to you about several. This is just one, but it's a very big example. Now, look what the Messiah says. This is Jesus Christ, red letter words. Right here. 2136. This is what he said for us to do. Right here. Watch, therefore, and pray. Watch and pray always. The word always in the Greek is broken down into three Greek words. One, two, three. In the, in the key, James, with the strong number, it gives you these three Greek words here, but they're not translated in English. But if you get a concordance, or if you get a lexicon, you can go look up G1722, G3956, uh, and G2540. Now, what we already know. Now, what did Peter say? Christ is using the Greek word karash. He's speaking in Greek here. So he's telling you to pray always during these divine appointments. What are those? What are these divine appointments here that Jesus Christ is telling you to pray in? He's telling you to pray in all weekly Sabbaths and all holy days, year in and year out, continually. To say, uh, and what are you praying for? You're praying to be counted worthy in the resurrection from the dead so you can stand before the Son of Man uh, when that time comes when we meet Him in the air. And then, Paul, and then Christ reveals in Luke 20, 36 that you will be called the sons of God. Why are you called? Why will you be called the sons or the children of God? Is because you are the children of the resurrection. That's what Christ says, people. So that's why he wants you to pray the time. At that time, because he's there as our intercessor at the right hand, waiting to hear those prayers in all of those times, Hebrews 7.25. I have not got to that to teach y'all on that, but I'll let you in on a very hidden, another hidden mystery in Hebrews 7, chapter, verse 25, that ties in with this verse here, except Christ is in heaven at the throne, waiting to hear our prayer that he's told us to pray while he was in the flesh. Now he's at the right hand, and now he, we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge, and Hebrews 7.25 reveals what he's saying right here. Now, what I was going to show to you here, guess what, people? Christ is telling you to pray on the same time. Christ is telling you to pray on the same time that Paul tells you to redeem that time. Now do you understand? If you redeem the time, then the Holy Spirit shows you that Christ tells you to pray at that time. Guess what you're doing? You're calling him Lord, Lord, and you're doing what he says. Instead of saying, Lord, Lord, and don't do what he says, now you can repent and follow him and do what he says. Now, what did Peter just reveal 
in Acts 3.23. What did he say? There's going to be a prophet that stands up and we have to hear him. And if we don't hear, that comes from Deuteronomy the 18th chapter. In the Hebrew, Shema means to hear and obey. So have you heard what he said here? Have, you been, have, have we rightly divided the word for you to hear? So what is, what is the outcome? Me knowing this, and if I do not obey the master and do what he says, what is Peter telling me that's going to come in the, will come to pass? That Christ will destroy me from among the believers. Now that's what he, that's what he said. I'm not making, I'm not adding or taking away the book. You've read the scripture just like I have. Now, I want to, I'm going to close this down, but we're going to go back. I'm going to show you another huge uh, mystery in Acts uh, right here that uh, that is revealed in Peter and John's preaching. So now we're back to Acts 3.23. It should come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet Yeshua shall be destroy, uh, destroyed from among the people. Now, he's told you when to pray. The apostles have told you to redeem these times. So this is the refreshing of times that Peter prophesied in uh, Acts 3.19. All right, let's continue here. 25. We are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Now in the context, how is all of the seed of the kindreds being blessed when they hear this preaching? Because they redeem the times it's lost and they come back to God's Sabbath and His holy days. And it's through the seed of Abraham, the Tekon Epigalia, the promised seed of Abraham, by faith, and that's where this message is coming to. So that seed is will bless all nations, those are ones that hear and respond, so their sins will be blotted out when they hear this message of the gospel of the kingdom. This is a message of the gospel of the kingdom. The message of the gospel of the kingdom, people, is not walk an altar out, say a confession, and you get saved by some sinner's prayer. You will not find that in any of Acts, any of the teaching, people. I'm sorry. It's just like you will not find that in any of the teaching that you worship on Sunday. That's not in Acts. That's not in the apostles. They're all telling you to buy back the times that we've been away from God. You see? Okay, now, right here. Unto you, first God has raised up his son Jesus, uh, sent him to bless you in the turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Praise God, amen. Praise God for this huge understanding. Now, getting ready to close, I want to go to the first chapter of chapter 4. And we're going to see that these Pharisees are very upset, or the Sadducees, because they've heard this teaching. Now we're going to look in the very next verse, which will start the, in the fourth chapter, knowing that there's not any chapters in the Greek, but therefore we'll go to the next verse, which is marked as the fourth chapter of Acts. Now, as they spake unto the people, this is talking about Peter and John, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Look, look, what, look what kind of attitude they had. Being grieved, that word grieved means worried, passively toiled through, very upset that they taught the people who Peter and John was teaching the people and also this didn't just have to do with the, the lame uh, person that was re that got up and walked in the name of Jesus, but look what they were really grieved over right here. 
they taught the people and preached through Yahshua the resurrection from the dead. Now, wait a minute now, uh, people. Did you notice what the text said here? That in Yahshua was the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection from the dead, this is plural masculine, people. This is not talking about Christ's resurrection. Christ is the singular one. He's singular masculine. But who is who are they preaching here? They were preaching a resurrection from through Christ or in Christ was the resurrection from the dead. Now, now the King James does not line the Greek text up very well. Now I want to give you a translation that does a better job with the Greek text than the King James, and that's the Apostolic translation. Now I'm going to click on it, and then I want us to read that before we close. Look at this, people. Being worked up because of John and Peter's teaching right here. This is in reference to them. The, the people teaching the people and announcing or preaching. It means to proclaim, to care, preach, speak of, teach. It takes in all that. The translation here, the announcing, notice, in the Jesus, notice how they uh, record it in the English according to the Greek text. Here we go. Announcing in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. Now, now people, see, people has missed this for hundreds of years. So what are you saying, Larry, what, is, what does Peter and John mean here? What they mean is that they were preaching the dead saints in Matthew 27, 51, 52, 3, when Christ gave up his Ruach, the graves broke open. You had many dead bodies laying around. They have come out of their tombs through the resurrection three days later on first fruits after Christ was raised. Go read Matthew 27, 52, and 3, people. So Peter and them is preaching Jesus Christ's resurrection, but here they're preaching the resurrection of the many dead saints that slept in Matthew 27, 52, 53, people. Can you believe that's in Acts 4, 1? And why hadn't any preacher, or wherever you're going, why, have, why isn't this man preached all over the world, people. Well, guess what? What did Peter say? The freshing of these times and the recovery of breath is coming. That's why it's being revealed. Because it's time. But guess what, people? It's nothing new. The, the early apostles and believers in the Messiah preached the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of through Christ of the dead. That's Matthew 27, 52, 53. Right here in Acts 4, 1, or actually uh, 4, 1 and 2, they were preaching through in Jesus, let's read it right here, announcing in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So through Christ become those many dead saints that were asleep, which is Rachel's children, which is Rachel's children, which is also known as the 12 tribes. It's also known as the 144,000. And this is being refreshed, and this is coming out. Because, see, it's all in the Scripture. It's just been hid. Now, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness to your spirit as we have traded these Scriptures and these prophecies with one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, soon coming King. Amen.